What's up guys, welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, what we're gonna do is continue with inverses. We gotta find the formula for the inverse of each of these three functions here. So the first function we got, f of x equals three minus the square root of five minus three x. Notice that this is just the radical function. The radical parent function, which is the square root of x, is just transformed. So what I'm actually first gonna do is find what the domain and range of this function is. Because once you have that, that's gonna affect the domain and range of the inverse. It's just gonna be interchanged. So we got three minus root five minus three x. Now the domain for any radical function is always gonna be whatever the expression is under the radical. That has to be greater than or equal to zero. So basically five minus three x has to be greater than or equal to zero because you can't be square rooting a negative number. And so if we isolate for this x here, we could bring the negative three x over. So we'll have five is greater than or equal to three x, divide both sides by three. And so x is less than or equal to five over three, or you could write it like this as well. Another way you could have isolated for this x is brought the five over. So you'd have negative three x is greater than or equal to negative five. But then you'd have to divide by the negative three. And remember when you're dividing by negative with uh, dealing with inequalities, you gotta flip the sign. So personally, I like to always bring over the x wherever it's positive so I don't have to worry about the whole flipping thing. So we know the domain of this function is going to be uh, x e r and then x is less than or equal to 5 over 3. And you can actually see that as well by changing this to the general transformation format. If you remember from that from uh, grade 11, basically what we can do is we could take this function and we can rewrite it as negative root five minus three x plus three. So I just took this three, I put it in front, and then further simplifying it, we can switch these up, negative three x plus five. And then what we could do is we could factor out the negative three. So that would be like the k value. If you remember transformations, if we factor out a negative three, we'd have x by itself, and then positive five divided by negative three would give us minus five over three, and there'd still be a plus three here. So basically what this means is if we take that radical function, this is the square root of x, that parent function, what kind of transformations is it gonna undergo? Well, it's gonna get shifted over by five over three to the right, so that's going to be 5 over 3. So that means it would be like this. It's also going to be shifted up by 3. So let's say 3 is over here. And notice that the k value is negative 3. So it's going to be uh, horizontally compressed by a factor of 1 over 3. And because it's negative, it's also going to be flipped in the y-axis. So it's gonna be going this way, and then also notice the a value is negative one. So it's also flipped in the x-axis. So it's gonna be flipped in the y-axis and flipped in the x-axis. So it's actually gonna look something like that. So it's five over three and three, right? And so notice that that domain is x is less than or equal to five over three. And notice we can figure out what the range is as well. So the range is y e r and y is less than or equal to three. Right, all the y values are less than or equal to three because the function got shifted up by three and then it also got flipped in, got reflected in the x-axis. So instead of going up now, it's going down. And it got shifted up by three, so all the y values are basically less than or equal to three. And so now that we have that, the domain and range, we can um, we could find out what the, uh, the inverse is gonna be. So let me actually rewrite that. 
So what did we have? We had a negative, I'm just gonna rewrite the original as is. So to find the inverse, we switch the x and y. So this would be x equals negative five minus three y plus three. And we gotta isolate for that y now. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring the three over. So we'll have x minus three equals negative root five minus three y. Divide both sides by negative one to get rid of this negative in front. So there'd be like a negative in front here. Then what we gotta do is we gotta square both sides to get rid of this square root. So we'll have, you know what? I'm gonna just distribute this negative inside the bracket. So that would be negative x plus three, which is like three minus x. Um, squared equals five minus three y. And then from here, I can bring the five over. So I'll have uh, three minus x squared minus five equals negative three y, and then divide everything by negative three. So this would get divided by negative three, and then this would get divided by negative three. And then this as well. So we would end up, let me give myself some more room here. We'd end up with y equals negative one over three, three minus x squared plus five over three. So that's the formula for the inverse. And if you wanted to put the x in front kind of, you can, um, what you can actually do is you could take out a negative. And then this negative one can get squared and it just turns into a positive. So three minus x squared is actually the same as x minus three squared. Okay, hopefully that made sense. So um, three minus x squared, let me show you how this works on the side. If I take out a factor out of negative one, I'll end up with x minus three and all of that will be squared. And notice that we could take everything in the bracket and square it. So we'll have negative one squared, then we'll have x minus three squared. And negative one squared is just positive one. So we could sort of just get rid of that. So this and this are the same thing, right? And that looks more like a proper quadratic. However, notice that we have to restrict the domain for this because the range is restricted for the function. That's why we have to find that domain and range because it wasn't plus or minus here. There was a minus, so it's not a full sideways parabola. It's like a sideways parabola that's cut in half because there's that minus there. It wasn't plus or minus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take that inverse function that we got. I'm going to rewrite it. So we'll have negative one over three x minus three squared plus five over three, but we gotta make sure that we were writing that we're restricting the domain so x is actually less than or equal to three, which is the opposite of the range of the original function. Right, so a little tricky there. So basically, notice that this parabola has a vertex of three and five over three. So if we uh, draw this, three and five over three is like here. And notice the a value is negative, so it's opening down. This might not be the correct drawing, like the intercept might be on this side even. But all that really matters is the vertex and if it's opening up or down, because from here you could tell what the domain and range are. So notice the domain of this is xer and the range is y has to be less than or equal to five over three. But because we restricted the range for the function, we're restricting the domain. So we're only looking at this leg over here, all the x values less than or equal to three. And notice all the y values are less than or equal to five over three, which matches the domain of the original function. So anyway, this is the final answer for number one. Moving on to number two, we got f of x equals three x minus one over two x minus three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, rewrite it here, so we got y equals three x minus one over two x minus three. First step, interchange the x and y. So we'll have x equals three y minus one over two y minus three. 
and we have to isolate for this Y. So notice there's two Y's here. So it's actually a little bit more challenging. What we do in this case is we're gonna cross multiply. So one times three Y minus one, it's just three Y minus one. And then X times this expression, we gotta put that expression in brackets. And then what we do is we distribute that X inside. So we'll have two X wide minus three X. And then what we want to do is we want to bring all the expressions that have a y attached to it to one side and then all the other expressions to the other side. So I'm going to bring this 2xy over, so I'll have 3y minus 2xy. And then this negative one I'm going to bring over, it's going to become a positive one. And then we have the minus 3x over here. So all the expressions with y. And then notice that we can factor out a y. So we'll have y3 minus 2x equals 1 minus 3x. And then we could divide both sides by this bracket. And so notice then the y is gonna be by itself. So we'll have one minus three x, three minus two x. And that's the inverse right there. Uh, another thing, if you wanted to make this look a little nicer, notice that we could factor out a negative from both. So we could take out a negative and all the signs would change here. So this negative three X would be positive three X. This positive one would become minus one. So we'd have three X minus one over, if we factor out a negative from the bottom, we'd have two X minus three. And then notice these negative ones would cancel out, right? So this or this works. Sometimes the textbooks will do that extra step where, they're f where they factor out a negative from both the numerator and the denominator, so all the signs change, but it ends up being the same thing anyway. And a lot of times students can get confused as to, I got this, but the textbook is showing that. They're actually the same thing, right? They just factored out a negative in the numerator and the denominator. So either way, this or that is the inverse for that function. And then moving on to number three, finally, we got x squared minus six x plus two, but notice the domain is restricted where x is greater than or equal to three. So notice this is a parabola. So with parabolas, if you're finding the inverse of a parabola, I mentioned this before, you gotta make sure that it's in vertex form. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna complete the square on this. There's nothing to factor out in front of the x, which is nice. So all we do is we take half of six or half of negative six, which is negative three, square it, which would be nine. So we do plus nine minus nine, and then we have the plus two. So it's like we're adding zero here. And these three terms are always gonna be a perfect square trinomial when we factor it. It's always gonna be x, it's gonna be half of that number, minus three here, squared, right? x squared minus six x plus nine factors into x minus three squared. And then negative nine plus two, that just ends up being negative seven. Okay, so this and this are the same thing. So if we graph the function, the vertex is at what? Three and negative seven. So that's like uh, here. Right, am I missing something? No, I think I'm all good. So three and negative seven. And it's opening up. So it looks like this, and it has a y-intercept of two, so I know it's gonna look something like that. It's gonna go through two right there, right? Should be symmetrical, not the most symmetrical drawing, but nevertheless, it is a parabola. So three and negative seven, but notice that the domain is restricted. X is greater than or equal to three. So we're only actually looking at this leg over here. Right, so the domain is x is x e r x is greater than or equal to three, and then the range is y e r, but y has to be greater than or equal to negative seven. So now let's find the um, the inverse of this. So we would switch the x and y's, and then isolate for that y. Bring the seven over. We'll have x plus seven equals y minus three squared. Square root both sides. 
and then isolate for that y, bring the negative three over. So basically y equals the square root of x plus seven plus three. And instead of putting y, I'm just gonna put that inverse symbol. So that there is the inverse of this, but we have to restrict the domain and range for this because we restricted the domain uh, and range for the function. So basically the domain of this is gonna be XER, but x has to be greater than or equal to negative seven, right? Because the range is y is greater than or equal to negative seven for the function. And then the range for the inverse is gonna be y r. Uh, y has to be greater than or equal to three because that's how the domain for the function is restricted. And so that there, ends up being your answer for number three.